I would point out that the Bible was formulated and assembled and edited and modified and censored and transmitted, first orally and then in writing, by human beings. The Bible itself doesn't claim to have been written by God. That belief is a religious doctrine of, of a much later age, and even then one wonders how literally it was meant. It's interesting to go back and look at, at some of the earliest uh, claims about the origin of the biblical text. Similarly, the so-called five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the first five books we call the Pentateuch of Moses, um, nowhere claimed to have been written in their entirety by Moses. That's not something they say themselves. Some laws in Exodus, you know, the Book of the Covenant, a few things, yes, it says Moses wrote those down, <coughs> but not the whole five books that traditions later will ascribe to him. The Bible clearly had many contributors over many centuries, and the individual styles and concerns of those writers, their political and religious motivations, betray themselves um, frequently. I leave aside here the question of divine inspiration, which is an article of faith in many biblical religions, it's no doubt an article of faith for people in this very room. But there is no basic incompatibility between believing on faith in the divine inspiration of the Bible and acknowledging the role that human beings have played in the actual formulation and editing and transmission and preservation of that same Bible. And since this is a university course and not you know, perhaps a, a theological course or within a theological setting, it's really only the latter, the demonstrably human component, that will concern us. It's very easy for me to assert that our interest in the Hebrew Bible will be centered on the culture and the history and the literature and the religious thought of ancient Israel in all of its diversity, rather than que questions of faith and theology. But the fact remains that the document is the basis for the religious faith of many millions of people, and some of them are here now. It is inevitable that you will bring what you learn in this course into dialogue with your own personal religious beliefs. And for some of you, I hope all of you, that will be enriching and exciting. For some of you, it may be difficult. I know that. And I want you to rest assured that no one in this course wishes to undermine or malign religious faith any more than they wish to promote or proselytize for religious faith. Religious faith simply isn't the topic of this course. The rich history and literature and religious thought of ancient Israel as preserved for us over millennia in the pages of this remarkable volume, that is our topic. And so our approach is going to be necessarily academic. Um, and especially given the diversity of people in this room, that's really all that it can be, so that we have common ground and, and common goals for our discussions. But it has been my experience that from time to time, um, students will uh, raise a question or um, ask a question that is prompted by a commitment, a prior commitment to an article of faith. Sometimes they're not even aware that that's what they're doing. And I want you to understand that on those occasions, I'll most likely respond by inviting you to consider the article of faith that lies behind that question and it's creating that particular problem for you. I'm not going to be drawn into a philosophical or theological debate over the merits of, of that belief, but I'll simply point out how or why that belief might be making it difficult for you to read or accept what the text is actually and not ideally saying and, and leave you to think about that. And I see those as wonderful learning opportunities for the class. Those are in no way a problem for me.